just because submitting to God is something that was natural to you, what makes you think submitting to Allah the Quran means you're submitting to the true God? Because when I read the Quran, I don't find any uh, contradictions. There are plenty of contradictions, friend. We'll get into that. Okay. But that's subjective again. Even if you have a book that has no contradictions, that doesn't mean it's a revelation from the true God. So what makes you think the God of the Quran is a true God, the God revealed through the prophets? Also, I just want to preface this. You know, I'm not a... I'm, I'm a layman, so you know you. I, I'm actually hoping that you stump me today. No, by the way, not, you'll get stumped. And the reason why I only came after you, so now notice what you said. You're not a scholar layman, but you went after Marmari. I didn't watch the video, so it's ironic for me. Someone who says he's a layman, he's not a scholar, but yet he feels confident enough to make a video criticizing Marmari. Did so you I, watch that video? No, uh, just when you said he lied about it. That he did lie. He said he said that put, pigs have a hoof that is not split. Okay, okay. let's say and oh, for the lie. sake of charity. Well, I'm going to say that your God lied about the Trinity. So if you want to be ungracious on charity, <laughs> no, we'll get there. You can laugh, friends. I mean, see, we can have a serious. You can laugh. Okay. We we can approach things graciously and give people the benefit of the doubt that he misspoke because he doesn't know too much, or we can impugn them with the worst motives possible. But if you're laughing at that. We're going to have a field day with what you believe to be the uncreated speech of God, making assertions regarding certain groups that you have no proof for. For example, I want you to give me some extra Quranic proof, historical, textual, archaeological, for the assertion of Surah Al-Tawbah, chapter 9, verse 30, that the Jews believe that Uzair is a son of Allah. Let me put it on the screen. See, when you, the same measure you use will be turned against you. So you were ungracious to him. So now you got to. Now, you can't handle the heat. Don't. You said it was 9.30? Chapter 9, verse 30, yes. I'm going to put on. <laughs> and you want you want proof of like the historical accuracy of this? Can you give me one single extra Quranic source that says the Jews viewed Uzair, the son of Allah, because it's contrasted to the Christians, Nasara, believing that the Messiah is the son of Allah. Can you name any Jewish group, apart from your biased Muslim sources, who this group is? Let me put on the screen for everyone to see. And by the way, who is Uzair? I, I honestly have no idea. Exactly. So you embrace the religion you really don't know, and you're of course I'm not. Of course I'm not going to know everything. Of, of, no, that about this it, is you know? not about everything. It's these are the basics because here the assertion is that Allah desires that the Muslims fight against all forms of idolatry, which includes the idolatry of the Jews and Christians of ascribing a son to Allah. Let me enlarge the screen. So if you haven't read chapter 9, which is one of the final chapters, according to Muslim sources, if we just go by the Quran, we don't know about the chronology of the Quran. But if I go with Muslim sources, chapter 9 is one of the last, if not the last chapters that was composed in Surat al-Bara'ah, Surat al-Tawbah. And here it's saying, in the context of why Allah wants to fight Jews and Christians. And the Jews say, Uzair, they say, Uzair is the son of Allah. That's what they're telling you. We don't know who Uzair is because Uzair is not the Arabic form of Ezra. And the Christians say Messiah is the son of Allah. That is a saying from their mouths. They imitate the saying of the disbelievers of old. Allah's curse be upon them. It really says Allah fight them, but put that aside. So Allah's cursing Jews for saying that he, Allah is a son, it's Uzair. Who's Uzair? I, I, like I said, I don't know. Okay. So this is why I say if you're going to be charitable and give people the benefit of doubt, then the same measure you use will be extended to you. But if you're going to come ungraciously and attack people and think, maybe you must We all must speak. None of us is perfect. Yeah. And you're going to be treated the same way. So now, again, let's come back to the first issue. So you say submitting to God. Yeah, obviously. But I'm still wanting to know what makes you think Allah the Quran is a true God, especially the true God revealed through the prophets, because it mentions Jesus. And even the Arabic name for Jesus, Isa, doesn't correspond to the Arabic form of his name. But we'll get into that. So why do you think Allah the Quran is a true God? Um, um, when in the Quran, when it says Allah is the most gracious and most merciful, when I in, intuitively, well, I guess you're going to say that's subjective. Yeah, it is. It is. It is subjective. But you're asking me, why do I think so? Isn't that? But you're doing da dawah, right? You're trying to invite people to the way of Islam because obviously you got a YouTube channel. So now I'm sure. a Christian. I want to yeah. know how you're going to assure me that all of the Quran is a God revealed in and through the prophets, especially Jesus Christ. So convince me, do dawah. Can't be just subjective. Well, I mean, 
you're a Christian and, and I, I don't think I, I, I didn't really come here with the intention of trying to convert you to Islam. But if you're curious, I think if you read the, the attributes of Allah, if you understand the attributes of Allah, I do, then I think you would logically come to the conclusion that that is God. No, not at all. There are attributes of Allah okay. that do not befit the attributes as outlined in the scriptures, the Bible, and revealed in Jesus. For example, I'll just give you the most basic. By the way, sure. what am I saying? Because in chapter 16, verse 125 of the Quran, this is an exhortation to you. You believe in the Quran, I don't. Invite, now they add stuff in parentheses, mankind, O Muhammad, to the way of your Lord. Invite them with wisdom. And then it, this is the parentheses, not part of the other. Okay. And fair preaching, with wisdom, fair preaching, and argue with them in a way that is better. So obviously you're going to do dawah until you don't do it. So if, okay, well, my efforts are not working with this guy, you move on. But you're supposed to do this just like I'm supposed to mm -hmm. preach the gospel. Your Lord knows best who has gone astray from his path. He is the best aware of those who are guided. But the most okay. basic fundamental aspect of God outlined in the Old Testament, New Testament, is that God is a spiritual father, not a physical father. He's a spiritual father who has spiritual children, and he's particularly the father of Jesus Christ. Is your God Allah your father? Is he my father? Yeah, is he the father of the Ummah, the father of Muhammad, the father of Muslims? Mm, I would say in a in a literal biological sense, of course, no. That's not what I ask, because no Jew or Christian believes that Allah, if you want to use the term Allah, which you believe is the God of the Christians, is a mm. biological father. They believe that God is a spiritual being. So he has spiritual children who are born of his spiritual word, born of his spirit. So he's a spiritual father. So is Allah your father spiritually? But doesn't it say in the Bible that we're children of God? So in a sense. Yeah, but that's not the Quran. That's my point. Are you. But you just said Christians don't believe that we're the, that God is a father. No, but this is recorded. See, if you can't hear me well, then I suspect sure. you understand the Quran and the Bible. No, that's not what I said. It's recorded. I said, no Christian or Jew believes God is a physical being who sires children biologically, procreatively. I said, he's a spiritual father. I was very plain and clear. Is Allah sure. your spiritual father? I'm still waiting for the answer. Spiritual. No, I would have no reason to say that Allah is my spiritual father. No, no, he isn't. Because the Quran denies when the Jews came to your prophet, Surah Al-Maidah, chapter 5, verse 18, and the Jews and Christians say, we are the children of Allah. There was no Jew or Christian at the time Muhammad that thought Allah sired them biologically, physical procreation. They meant it spiritually. And I'll prove that from the scriptures of the Jews and the Christians and his loved ones. And then the responses say, why then does he punish you for your sins? Nay, you are but human beings of those who he has created. He forgives whom he wills and he punishes whom he wills. And to Allah belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth and all that is between them. And to him is the return of all. Now, the highest relationship you can have with your God is this. Chapter 19. Surah al maryam chapter 19, 88 to 93. And they say the most beneficent has begotten a son or offspring or children. Now, remember, parentheses, brackets, that's not in the Arabic. So I can, right. or, or we can read them. As the Jews say, Uzair is the son of Allah. And the Christians say that he's begotten a son, Isa. And the pagan Arabs say that he has begotten daughters. That's their comment. Indeed, you brought forth a terrible evil thing, whereby the heavens are almost torn and the earth is split asunder and the mountains fall in ruins that they ascribe a son or offspring or children to the most beneficent Allah. But it is not suitable for the majesty of the most beneficent that he should beget a son or offspring or children. There's none in the heavens and the earth but comes unto the most beneficent as a slave. So right here, you're told all you are is a slave and he is your master. Sure. That's not the God of the Bible. 